Hi everyone and welcome to 5 Minute Family Search. So this video I'm going to do a little differently. All the other videos on my YouTube channel are 5 minutes or less, but I would like to run the Family Search Tree app through from beginning to end. I'm not going to go into any details at all. I already have done this program and broken it down into several steps to show you how to go into each section. So this video would be for someone who is very familiar with Family Search and knows how to go in and to manipulate the screens, how to do duplicates, how to um, tag in sources, all of that stuff. If you don't, you could watch this video and then go through my other playlist that will have this app broken out down step by step. So let's just go ahead and get started. When you open up your app, it's going to bring you here. This will be you in first position right here, and you will have five generations showing. That's just the way it always will come up. These circles up here, you can go ahead and click on those and it'll expand your tree and it'll keep going back as far as there is information in the individual spots. So you already know to make your screen larger, you can pinch it with your fingers or you can pull it back down. All of these names are clickable. This is your pedigree chart. I will come back out and show you how to click and move around, but I just wanted to show you how the front screen is laid out. It also, this app is not able to be manipulated. It is in portrait view because that is how they built the app. It's easier to read on your device. So know that you are not able to go ahead and switch around through the landscape view or any of those other views. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to come up here to those three lines on the left hand side. If I click on pedigree, it's just going to take us exactly back where we were. Ancestors with tasks. Let me show you this information right here. Ancestors with tasks brings up everybody that you have opened up so far in your portrait pedigree on this app and looks through to find anybody who might need information done in their record. So let's come over here to I and it'll show you ancestors with tasks. The blue are record hints. The green are for temple ready. The orange means need more information. Now those of you who are familiar with family search, you know there you will get the little red boxes with the exclamation points and the other little individual icons. Here on the app, everything is underneath the same orange circle. So we're gonna go ahead and come back out if I want to go in and search this list just for a specific person, I can click on the hour, I'm sorry, on the magnifying glass right there. If I come to the right, these three lines, I can filter this out. I can just look at people who need temple work done, or I can look at people with hints. Now I apologize between the server and my phone being hooked to my computer. It's a little slow and becoming clear on the screen, so I apologize if it is a little blurry. And then I also can come out and just do hints and then I can go back and I can do all. So that is how I can go through and either filter out the ancestor list or I can leave it broad and just work through any of them. And I can just scroll down with my finger. So we're gonna go back out and back up to these three lines. Now we're gonna look at temple. I'm actually not gonna click on that. It will take me to my temple file. I do have several names in there and so it'll take a while to load up. But that is where I can go through and I can see all of the different baptisms, confirmations, initiatories, endowments, sealing to spouse, sealing to parents, everything that needs to be done. I can print out an FOR paper to take to the temple. I can print out an actual card. I can do all of that in my temple file. And I would just go ahead and click right there. It's run just like you would normally do on your desktop. Search historical records. If I come in here, it gives me the opportunity to go through family search and to look through all of the records. I can go by first name, last name. I can come down here and search with a life event. So a birth, a marriage, a residence, a death, or anything else. I can come down and search by a spouse, parents, other person that may have they may have had a relationship with, and I can just put all this information in. Also, I can come down here, and if there's a collection I know I want to search, I can go in there, or I can research by location. So though that is how, just like on your desktop, how you can go through and, and search the historical records. So closing that back out back up to these three lines. Now relatives around me. This is a newer feature that they just added a little while ago and it's actually really fun. So if you are on the screen, you can have anybody that is around you, if they are on the screen as well, 
it will go through and scan both of your trees and try to find common ancestors. So this would be really fun for a meet and greet or anything like that to have people all get onto this page and to scan for friends. A friend of mine, we did it the other day at church and she and I found out that we're 11th cousins. We had no idea that we had a common ancestor. So that is a new feature that's kind of fun. So coming back out to messages, this is your inbox for family search. If you have sent messages or someone has a question for you and they are sending you a message, this is where you will go to read those messages to see what they have to say. My memories, this pairs up with the family search memory app. So if you have the memories app on your phone, it's going to go straight to it. And it's going to pull down the information. If you didn't, it just won't work. It'll just tell you that you need to add in the app. So they bounce back and forth. You can click on this one. It'll take you into the memories app and you can click in the memories app and it'll bring you back to the family search tree app over here are the settings help and sign out. So they're pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to come back out now to pedigree. Let's see. Well, let me come out this way. I apologize. I got to come back out of memories and back into the family search app. So here we are back in pedigree and we're back looking at my tree. So now I'm going to come up here in the top right hand corner. And again, I apologize for the blurriness. I might come back actually in a little bit and retape this whole thing for you so it's much more clear. But I at least wanted to get this put into a playlist so that you could learn this. This is the history list. This is everybody that I have looked at either on my desktop or on my phone. Remember, you're accessing a server. And so these are just people that I've looked up, trees I've gone into. And so that is how I would access my history list. Here with the magnifying glass, I can come in and look for a specific person. I can look by their names, birth year, any of the information that I have. And then if I want to get into specific person, I can just come down here and I'm going to click on my grandfather. When I do, it's going to bring up his page. So here are the details, his picture, his name, his birth, his death, his unique ID number. Here I can add in information if I need to do that or correct any information. Everything here is clickable, so you can go through and click on any of this and change the information. I can come over to spouses. I can add a wife if he had a third wife. I can come into each wife and I can manipulate any of the information in there. She is my pref the preferred spouse, so I have Jane Claire marked, so that brings her up as main, one of the main people in my tree. Um, and not his second wife who he didn't have children with and I come through the his first wife so I have her as the preferred if I come down here anywhere these pencils are I can go ahead and change information so if I was to come in and just click on a pencil it gives me the opportunity to say these are wrong parents or to correct any of that information this is the screen that you would do that and like I said I'm assuming that you understand how to manipulate all this information from your desktop version with family search if I come to parents, these are my great grandparents, my grandfather's parents. Same thing, I can come in here and I can manipulate any of this information. If there is a sibling that is missing, I can come down here to add sibling. Or if I need to change out the parents, I can come down here and add a different parent in. Sources, these are the sources that have been attached to his record. If I want to add more, I can just click this button and it will go ahead and let me add another source in. Memories, again, this is accessing the app, the Family Search Memory app, and so these are just the memories that I have already have for him. Charts, if I want to download the PDF for the pedigree, the family, family with sources, fan chart, or portrait pedigree, I can do that in this screen here. Ordinances, I can come over here and I can see that all of his ordinances are completed. I can come down and see when they were completed and where they were completed and make sure that everybody is taken care of. So that is how you access all of the information on his personal page. Here in the top right, you'll see these three dots. This is view my relationship. I can click on there and obviously I know it's my grandfather, but it will say my grandfather and it will have me at the bottom and it'll show a map of how I can get to that ancestor. So here is me, here is my mother, her father, her mother, so it is my grandfather. Again, in the other videos, I walk you through harder ones so you can take a look and see how that works. Again, back up here, search records. If I go into here, it's going to let me go into family search or ancestry.com. Again, if you're LDS, you should be able to 
open up an Ancestry account for free right now. When you go into FamilySearch or into Ancestry, it's going to take you to the page with all of his information already entered in. So you don't have to worry about copying and pasting. It will drop you right into the program ready to go to show you his information. Descendants with Tasks. This is just going to go through him and three generations around him. I can open it up to five. When I showed you out on the other screen, that ran through your whole tree that you had opened up so far. This just runs the generations around my grandfather. So that is the difference of those two screens right there. Coming down, see we just did descendants with task. View this tree. This moves my grandfather to first position. So now instead of having me here, it has my grandfather with the five generations around him. When I want to go back to my own personal tree, I can just click the home button and it'll take me back to where I was. So we're going to go back into my grandfather, come back up to these three dots. So we just view this tree. So now possible duplicates. If you are aware, a lot of times, since this is a server and people enter in information, there are a lot of possible duplicates. So you can quickly go through any of your relatives and just click on them and click on that possible duplicate tab. You will find a lot more duplicates back in like the 1700s, really early 1800s. A lot of that information has been duped several times. And so you definitely want to make sure that you go through those because the ordinance work for your relatives could be spread out across a few of those records. They could have the baptism and confirmation in one and a sealing in another. And so when you merge all those together, it will put all of, this, all of the records into one. And then you can make sure that the temple work hasn't been spread out over several different sources. But that is possible duplicates. If you're working on somebody and you step away for a few minutes or you think somebody else might be working on them as well, you can do what I just did, that refresh person, and it'll make sure that you have the most current information from Family Search on your program that you're looking at on your phone. Here is how you can watch and unwatch somebody. So as again, I'm assuming you know how to do this, that there's some information that you are making sure people don't change, or if you're hoping that someone will plug in some information, you can watch them and then unwatch them. And you will be notified by email whenever anybody makes a change to that record. You can download memories. So this would let me go into his record and I can pull down or download all of the information that that's the memory section. So like his photos, his stories, his documents. I'm not going to do that, but that way I can go and I can look at those later if I don't have an internet connection. I don't have to try to be connected. So I would just go ahead and click download and that would pull it all onto my phone. Uh, let's see, download memories, recent changes. This is a good place for you to go if you want to see, especially if you're watching somebody, of all of the recent changes that were made to the record. So here it shows me the changes that were made. Some of these, it looks like these are all me. Some of them you'll see as family search. Some of them you'll see uh, another person has come through and tagged in a source or added more information. But that is a way for you to go through and to see recent changes that have been made to an ancestor. And this last button is here, but it doesn't really exist. So if I just click that, it says delete person. It's not going to really delete him. That button is not active anymore. It used to be active, but we abused it. I don't know how to say it any nicer than that. We abused it. What would happen is people didn't understand what that delete person meant. And so if they saw like this person, Albert Gustav Riesacker, they may say, well, he wasn't related to Jane Claire Wildner. They weren't really married. And so they would just come in and they could delete him out. So they would just come up here and say delete person. But when they did that, what they don't realize is not they're not deleting him out of that relationship as a spouse or if he was the wrong father, they are deleting him out of family search. So that button is there. It's not active anymore. So if you push on it, you don't need to worry about it. Nothing's going to happen. But that is what that delete button is for. So like I said, I spoke quickly. I apologize for that. I wanted to make this as short as possible, but I wanted to be able to get in it to show you how this program works. So again, if you are familiar with Family Search, you are ready to go. You can just start moving around in your app. If you need a little more guidance, you can go into the playlist where I have recorded new videos to just go with the app. And then I have gone through and added in some of the desktop videos to explain things a little bit in more detail. But it's a fun app and I hope you can go ahead and get started and work in your family tree.